So I've already shown how to remove these cartridge connectors if you want to salvage them and swap them between boards, or potentially if you're building, say, one of the SYF boards where it's a brand new Game Gear board. This is a major pain to remove and refurbish, and this is one of the key things that uh, made me want to develop the new Game Gear game slot. So it'll be coming out soon, and I've got a brand new connector that we can replace this with with serviceable pins with two screws so you can just lift back and service all of these pins inside as well as have debug pins here and the potential for a lot of future expansion so with that i really now want to show you the best way to get these cartridge connectors off if you don't need to salvage them so if this is going to be replaced with one of our cartridge connectors for example there's no need to go through all the hassle of removing this and desoldering all the pins the hard way when there's a much quicker and easier way to remove this connector I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. Fairly obviously, and to start with, we need to cut these rivets. That's holding the plastic in place. So we just snip inwards a little bit to make sure the rivets are not making contact with the plastic. And you can either go for completely removing these rivets so you know they're gone or you can just leave them in place until you pull them off. Now here, you don't need to really cut through these now uh, because you don't want to risk damaging the traces next to them. So you can leave them in in case you scrape the traces. And then when you come to get the cartridge connector out, it should pull away and you can leave it to the pulling action. So for that, I'm going to leave them on here for safety. And all we need to do now is literally get the snippers, go along and snip every pin. Pins aren't very stiff to cut, they're nice and easy, so most side cutters will do the job no problem, and it takes seconds. Try to leave a stump as you're doing this, uh, and you'll see why in a moment. But once you've gone around one side, you now need to go on the inside here, so we'll do the same thing. Just get the cutters in there, and go along and just snip each pin of the connector away. And with all them away now, this cartridge connector will just simply pull off. You'll be stuck on those rivets because we didn't remove them from the other side. So you just have to make sure uh, you'd cut through completely. And if you're struggling, you can get kind of a pry bar generally under. And you probably want a plastic one again to avoid scratching. You get a pry bar under and kind of help you with those two leverage points. They would be the only two things holding uh, the cartridge connector in place. With that, you can now push the rivets out. And again, once they're above the board, you can safely use any tool to remove them. What you're left with now is a cartridge connector with some pins sticking up. And the old connector we can now just bin, ready for the new one. So we'll go over and chuck that connector. And when you come to install our new Game Gear game slot, uh, you don't really want these pins protruding. You want to get rid of these pins. So there's several ways to do that. Now we're dealing with one pin at a time. We can use the standard soldier iron technique and a pair of tweezers. And you can do them one at a time instead of having to try and warm everything up in one go. So for that, simply add some solder and remove the pins one at a time with tweezers. So for example, fresh bit of solder here. And just lift the pin out and show you again a little close up if we just apply solder to the pad, and you can see then just get your tweezers in at the same time, and just lift out the little bit that's left in. Another option that might be slightly quicker is to get your hot air, and then by warming the pins up, you can wait the appropriate time, and then just lift out the pins. And this is the approach I'll use. So you can see how quick this will be now. If we just warm up the pins, wait a second, lift out, you can really quickly and easily remove any pins. You can see they're even falling through the board. So they're just falling to the other side of the board as we're warming up. That's how quick they're coming out. Because you're dealing with single pins now. So you can even grab two at a time.
And now the only thing left to do is de-whip all these holes. But firstly, because this is lead-free solder, I'm just going to quickly get the iron and using the leaded solder, I just reflow the pins so it has some uh, leaded soldering. So lastly, the only thing left now is to clean these holes out. To do that, we'll just IPA all of the connectors first to make them nice and clean. You want to put the largest tip iron you have on for desolder wicking. Currently, I use a lot of thin tips, so this is about the thickest I've got on hand, but for these size holes, we should be good. But it's really important you get your iron tip as large as possible. Set your soldering iron to around 400 to 420. You must use flux, so flux the board. You have plenty of flux. Use good quality uh, desolder braid, that does make a difference too. We use Ansel Gutwick. And similarly, put extra flux onto your desolder wick too. Every single one of these steps is important. So if your iron isn't hot enough, the tip isn't large enough, you don't have leaded solder, or you don't have good quality desolder wick or flux, then you'll struggle to do this. If all of these components are right, like now, I should be able to simply just put the wick over, get the tip, press down, and once the heat starts transferring, you can see it flowing up the wick, you should be able to just move slowly and desolder wick these holes fairly easily. So you can see how quickly the solder wick gets consumed because we have so much solder in these holes. But you can see now they're all starting to desolder wick nicely. And you can do one hole at a time. Once you get to about this much desolder wick, you want to trim away the used wick because otherwise all the heat of the iron just gets transferred into this copper and you're wasting the heat. And another technique is to simply grab a certain amount of the desolder wick. And then you can apply it and remember to use tweezers, not your hands, because this will get hot. But you can then use a smaller piece like this. And as long as you've got enough flux still on the board, uh, you can just carry on. If you're not seeing the solder flow off like here, see how it's dry, then it's a sign you need some more uh, flux to allow the solder to flow. So we can apply some flux and get the flow going again. And you can see the process is working nicely, we're consuming the desolder wick and we're wicking away all those holes so they're ready for the new connector. Another little trick, uh, you can actually push the the solder wick into the hole sometimes if you've got fine enough tweezers you can go over the hole and just poke the tweezers through to get a strand of the desolder wick into the hole and you can see it clears out nicely so we'll do it on this one for example warm up a little bit poke the tweezers just gently where the hole is and then move away and it's cleared the hole so you can see there's various techniques to clearing these holes if you've been on it a short while, like now, remember to clean the board again with IPA. Otherwise, you're not going to get good thermal transfer once you have burnt flux in the way of the board. Take your time and don't worry about how long it takes. The important thing is don't apply much pressure with your iron. Don't scratch and scrape because you'll tear the pads. And just remember that every step is important. So the amount of heat you have, uh, the flux, the desolder wick, it's all important. I'll show you another technique. And again, you can use hot air for this one. So for the hot air technique, instead of the iron, you're basically going to place your uh, desolder wick on the board. You're going to use tweezers to move your desolder wick around. And we're just going to bring in the hot air instead and drag this around using hot air. The benefit of this is you'll get much more heat penetration and it depends on technique which one you prefer. But if you focus on these two holes for example, you can do the little tweezer technique, nice and easy. 
and it's really just a preference which you prefer. And I'll just finish the remainder of these holes off. You'll notice I've just gone back to the other soldier nine tip, my smaller one, and that's just because the other tip has failed. I haven't really used it much and it's already failed, so it's probably just a low quality um, hacko tip. But I'd say your main struggle, if you are doing um, the dewick, is simply not enough heat. That's normally uh, the main issue with dewicking. You simply don't have a large enough soldier nine tip, or you don't have enough heat or you're not allowing uh, that heat to flow due to, um, you know, no flux or dry solder, for example. If you have good heat, it's almost always going to be nice and quick. And you can see how quick those last few were uh, when I swapped my tip back. And even though this tip is smaller, this is a genuine Hakko tip. And I think the one I was using here is probably a fake tip because it's literally been used just for this so far. It's already oxidized and it's already died. So the big difference there was simply the high quality tip then allowed me to desolder wick them holes nice and quick. Just clean the board of all the flux now. So we can inspect that it's all good. So we can just quickly check all the holes are through with the tweezers. Just gently poke through the hole because you might just have residue, a bit of IPA, a bit of grime anything stuck in the holes some you can see clear through others you want to just double check with tweezers yep all those holes are completely clear now so there's the game gear stripped of the cartridge connector nice and easy and all the pins prepped for a new cartridge connector now the benefit of the game gear game cart i've made is you don't actually need to do this last step you don't need to clear them holes of solder the board will sit over and simply fill up solder again. So that last step you don't need to do at all if you're going to install one of our connectors. But it's good to just show you the techniques of cleaning the holes again. For reference, this is sort of how much desolder wick we used to clear just that amount of holes. So you will get through quite a lot of desolder wick and you must trim it off and use new pieces because once this is soaked with solder, it's not much use for de-wicking. If you are going to be doing this on batch, more than a few consoles, for example, then I would definitely recommend grabbing, say, a Hakko FR301, which is a desolder pump, which you simply plug in, press the vacuum button, and the end of here is a soldering iron with a hole in it, and when you press the button, it pulls a vacuum that sucks the solder through. So this is much easier. You just put a little bit of solder flux on there, cover the holes, and just press the button to desolder all the holes, and this takes seconds. Just be careful not to scrape um, by pushing down and scratch the circuit board when you do this because there's weight in this uh, desolder pump and your tendency is to actually put quite a bit of force down and end up scratching the board. But this isn't cheap. This is a good few hundred pounds. So using desolder wick is a nice cheap option and it builds up your skill set for being able to do more with just a soldering iron and some basic tools. So I hope this was useful and at least showed you yet another way to remove the cartridge connector, this time in a destructive manner, when you don't need to keep the original cartridge connector to reuse. It's certainly easier than removing it as a whole and keeping it intact because desoldering and removing parts from single pins at a time is much easier. If you've got any ideas on what you might like to see next, let me know in the comments and I'm sure to do it. That's it for this one and I'll catch you in the next.